Well, 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 would you take a look at that? In my garage, we have the brand new Tier 10 American Autoloading Heavy Tank, the M6 Yo. And this is no deceit, this is no trickery, this is the actual tank sitting in my open test account. Now, pretty much what the open test is, is it's another server that you can play on where other people are able to test the new dynamic suspension, the new PBR textures on the Yo's, and as well, the Yo's itself. We've got the Tier 7, the 7 Yo. We've got the Tier 8, the 3 Yo, the Tier 9, the 5 Yo, and finally, the one we're going to be talking about in today's video specifically, the M6 Yo. Now, getting my hands on an open test account was no easy feat. I had to pull a couple strings. So, if you want to see more videos like this on the other tanks, please consider smashing that subscribe button down below as it helps out the channel a crazy, crazy amount. And we're going to be starting off with the Tier 10 Yo in today's video. We're going to be talking about the statistics and then going into some gameplay that I did play. I will say, though, the replays are pretty buggy and so is just the server itself. It's crashed a couple times while trying to record videos. This is like the third attempt now. The first time I realized how laggy the replays were, I tried restarting the game. That didn't fix it. And then the game crashed the second attempt. So this is the third attempt at recording. Let's hope that it goes smoothly. So what do we have for the 105 millimeter? The gun I'm actually currently testing out. Well, it's got very good aiming time at 2.9 seconds. It's got great dispersion for a 105 millimeter at 0.317 and fantastic DPM for a tier 10 heavy at 3,024. The magazine reload time is actually great because it's only got 300 potential damage per shot and it does 900 in a clip. Unlike the 57 heavy that's got a much longer magazine reload, this thing, 12.86 seconds is, woof, pretty dang quick. And of course, it's got three shells in the magazine. Great standard pen at 271. The premium is pretty good at 363. Overall, not a bad gun, and it's got 10 degrees of gun depression. I've actually, believe it or not, been enjoying the three shell gun over the two shell gun. Now, this is the gun that everybody fears and everybody knows is going to be spammed when the vehicle comes out. It's a two shot 120 millimeter. Now, the DPM is 528 worse. The dispersion is about 30% worse. The aiming time is quite a bit worse as well. It's got one less shot in the magazine, but it deals 450 damage per shot, which means that in about two seconds of time, you're able to deal, yeah, that's right, 900 damage. It's pretty dang busted, and it's also got the 10 degrees of gun depression. Weirdly enough, though, it's got less pen on the standard by 6 and less on the heat by 11. I didn't really expect that, but I guess that can screw you in a little bit of scenario. So what do I have to say about both guns? Well, as I did say, I've been actually enjoying the 105 millimeter more. Now, it's not because the 105 and the 120 are really better for certain scenarios. It's just because you have more DPM on the 105. It makes it more enjoyable. It is so incredibly boring, and you're going to watch in this replay here because this is of the 120, how boring it is when you've got to sit and wait 20 seconds and only shoot twice, and then wait another 20 seconds and then shoot twice. And if you miss one shell, that's about half your DPM cut off that whole entire reload. Not very fun. So, yeah, it's kind of weird, but another thing I'm very excited about in the future update is the PBR textures. If you take a look at the O, you will see it looks absolutely fantastic, especially for a mobile game. It, it looks great, and not to mention as well, the dynamic suspension looks great as well. Because I'm a PC player now, I don't play in mobile anymore, it looks so good when you're able to see the suspension go up and down World of Tanks PC, and the fact that Blitz has it. This game is actually developing a lot in the textures, which is something that Blitz definitely needs because it makes it a lot more immersive. Here we are, finally loading into the replay. You can definitely see there are a lot of bugs with the current test patches. And I'm hoping that this isn't what the actual game is going to be like when they update it, because if it is, we got some serious problems here, Wargaming, because the game's been crashing, the replays don't work, FPS drops are a lot, takes literally a minute to load into a game. That's not great. But here we are loading into the first game. And you can see, just look at how nice the PBR textures look. Pretty much it means that it's an HD file, it almost looks like it comes right out of World of Tanks PC. You can also take a look at the dynamic suspension here, well, look at that, the wheels each go up one at a time when we go down this hill here, you're going to see the wheels go up, looks great. One thing that I hated about uh, Blitz was that when you drive down a hill and your tracks would just go right through the ground and then pop back up and your whole tank would sway back and forth, that doesn't really happen anymore. Now the tank kind of stabilizes like a gyroscope, pretty dang sweet. I give Wargaming 100% credit for that. Look at that. The suspension works pretty dang cool. Now, this is where it's a little bit buggy, as you can see. Yeah, the, the replays, 
Sadly, as I did say, the tanks glitch all over the place. I've had a couple defective replays, but it's fine. We're going to see how it works either way. So in that short amount of time, I've been able to pull up about 900 damage. I did get a bounce on the side. These tanks are very, very troll armor. That's what I have to say about it. Really, really troll armor. There's a bounce from the Leopard, that is, yes, as you can see, the wonderful replay file once again. But here we have a yo in front of me. And this guy is going to see what happens when you're able to sit there for about 1.7 seconds. So there's one and two. That's 939 damage. Boom, done. That's it. That's how quick you're able to get out such a ridiculous amount of damage. But now, well, now comes the time where you just wait for a whole 20 seconds to just look at the skies, enjoy the view. Because this is it. This is the entire playstyle of the Yo. And as you can see, I just find this incredibly boring. And then after that, you get one shell out and two shells out. Now, a lot of people could argue that I wouldn't have been able to get out the third shell with the other 105 quickly enough before that guy would have backed up. However, that's not really true because I would have reloaded about five, six, seven. I think it's seven seconds in total faster than the uh, than this gun. So I would have, you know, easily been able to clip that guy where this time you got to wait now. Yeah, it's... It's not the most enjoyable on how bad the DPM is on this tank. It's kind of like running a Kron, but you don't really have the advantages of the auto reloader. I don't know what to say about this gun. Like, you can see I'm already over 3,000 damage, and that's great. You know, I got a blind shot on that yo there. The alpha's great at 450, but I really don't know if I'm actually going to be running the 450 alpha gun just because look at how boring it is. The reload is incredibly long. Now, do I find this tank OP... Yeah, I don't know. I think they should just make the intraclip longer and buff the DPM. So what they could do is they can make the intraclip for the 450 about 2.5 seconds, and then that would be it. Or maybe even 3 seconds, and then you get out 900 damage in a total of 3 seconds, and then they make the DPM maybe like 26, 2700. I think that'd be decent. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments, but currently it's just too weird for me. There's a shot. Oh my god. As you can see again, very, very laggy, but you know what? Hey, the tank loaded in the file there. We're sitting at 4,500 damage now, and pretty much I'm able to get about one more shell out on this IS-4. Or actually, no, I'm already sitting at 5,000 damage because of that blind shot. So, in this game, I finished with about 5,000 damage, which is pretty dang good. And, well, yeah, that's it. That's really all that's about the 120 millimeter. It's a sit and poke play style. It's 12 shots, 12 fired, and 12 penned. Now, in most scenarios, you're going to expect a lot more tricky engagements than that. Obviously, there's going to be scenarios where you're up against, let's say, a cron to hold down, or mouses, or vehicles that you need to load premium, and yeah, that's where you're going to lose some advantages there, but at the same time, you also gain advantages of that big alpha and the quicker time to get out. It means that, let's say for this 105 millimeter, you can see me running here, the disadvantage of this is just the pure amount of time it takes you to dump out the damage. If it took about the same amount of time, it'd be great. You know, if it took 0.75 seconds between each shot, then it was 1.5 for the whole clip, it'd be great. But because it takes about five seconds to dump out the entire clip, it definitely can give you some scenarios where enemy tanks are able to back up and do a lot of things that you normally wouldn't be able to. Now, something else that you probably don't know, or if you do, um, it's because either Wargaming you watch the video, is that you can't actually track these vehicles. And that's something that needs to change. I don't know what Wargaming was smoking when they came up with that idea, but giving an autoloader the ability to constantly back up even when you shoot the track wheel makes no sense to me i i really what were you smoking there we're gaming i like the idea of these tanks i don't think they fit in the game but the whole track breaking thing where it says track broken and then they're still able to back up stupid completely overpowered and it means that i'm able to clip somebody and back up without even worrying about them being an autoloader and shooting me makes no sense and I really don't understand that. Now you're gonna see some of the advantages of the auto loading gun with the 105. Um, sadly, you're not really gonna see a great advantage with the replay here. Now that was not the best shot, but we've got the yo over here. And this is a good example of where the accuracy would be better, where the enemy yo with the, actually I guess he's running the 300 alpha as well. I don't really know what to say about the uh, open test right now. It's weird. A lot of the players aren't great. In fact, most of the players are just terrible on the test server. And uh, yeah, it's it's weird. It's very buggy. But here's a good example of the three-shot gun with its accuracy. You can see there, there's one shell onto the turret edge. There's one in the cupola and one on the upper plate. All three perfect pinpoint shots. You probably would not have been able to do that with the larger caliber gun with that E100-like dispersion. That's where this gun is great as well. You can see that DPM. I would not have been able to get a shot into that, uh, you know, that Vickers Light. I wouldn't have been able to get that shot out. I would have just now 
about when reloaded. And again, that's a perfect example to show where DPM is better in certain scenarios. If I was running the 450 Alpha Gun in this particular game, I would have been way worse off. But it's always down the personal playstyle. Do you like accuracy better? Do you like Alpha? I'm always an Alpha lover, but I don't know. It just seems really boring to run the high Alpha Gun. And even though it, it probably is better in most scenarios, I still think that DPM is key, at least with autoloaders, because there's really nothing else that this vehicle has going for it. Like, the armor's troll, but it's not fantastic. You can pen through it with most heat. The turret's got massive cupolas on the roof that I've been eas easily been able to snapshot when I've been testing it with the Yo itself. So, yeah, it's weird. I really don't know what to say. Overall, I think that the line's going to be fun, but for anybody wondering if they should grind down this line over anything else, I actually wouldn't suggest to do it. These tanks are going to get very boring very quickly. They're not very fast. They have decent armor, but they're kind of ugly in my opinion, and with the 400 damage gun, it's just... I think that these tanks are going to get very, very boring very, very quickly. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments, but I don't know. Just doesn't seem that exciting to me, but you can see this game. I'm at 3,600 damage, managed to survive, and the DPM definitely held me in this particular example. So, yeah, I think they're fun. I think that the Tier 9 is going to be absolutely overpowered, and they're going to have to nerf it. I think the Tier 10 might be nerfed. I don't know. I still think, as I said, the uh, Intraclip on the 450 should be increased, but the DPM should also be increased. You know, balance it out a little bit. But there you go, a 4K game for this gun. I think both guns are good. I personally enjoy the 105 more just because it's more engaging. You've got more DPM, which means flat out you win a lot more scenarios. Another example where the 105 would be better is you've got three shells and there's a low health tank in front of you. If you got that 120 loaded, you don't want to waste one of those shells, 450 alpha, especially when it's going to cut your DPM in half on a vehicle that's got 50 health. The 105, you just snap them and then you shoot your two shells at the other person. 12 seconds later, you've got three shells loaded. There is a lot more advantages you will get with the 105 personally. I find than the 120. And the reason I'm arguing this so hard is because I know a lot of people, including me, had the idea that the 120 was going to be a way better gun, but I honestly don't think so. Hopefully, all of you enjoyed today's video. If you want to see more like it, please consider smashing that subscribe button down below. But other than that, hopefully all of you are staying happy out there, staying healthy, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.